Hi, welcome to DLCO video lectures. So in the previous videos, we covered what is a combinational circuit, what are the examples of combinational circuits, like uh, what is half adder, what is full adder, their operation, and also we covered uh, what is a multiplexer, what is decoder, and that and all we studied in the previous videos. Now in this video, we are going to study about a sequential circuit, comparison of sequential and uh, combinational circuits, and also examples of sequential circuit. So before uh, going to the sequential circuit, first of all, we just recall what is a combinational circuit. So, the combinational circuit is a digital circuit where the output depends only on the present inputs. It means if uh, any of the input is changed, then the output also will be changed. So, that is the combinational circuit. So, here coming to this uh, sequential circuit, first of all, we will see what is a sequential circuit. So, the sequential circuit, it is also a digital circuit. Of course, both combinational and sequential circuits are the two types of digital circuits. So, in the DLCO, we are having two types of digital circuits. One is a combinational circuit, the other one is the sequential circuit. So, coming to this uh, sequential circuit, here in this sequential circuit, the output depends not only on the present inputs, but also depends on the past history inputs. That is the definition here. So, a sequential circuit consists of a combinational logic circuit whose output depends not only on the current inputs, but also on the history of inputs. History of inputs in the sense it is going to depend upon the past inputs. So, in other words, history of past inputs in the sense in other words we can say it comprises of memory elements. So, in order to store the past values means to store, I want to store the previous value. So, where I will store in the memory like in our uh, mobile phones we will store all the data in the memory like that here also in the sequential circuit it is a type of combinational circuit it is represented here it consists of a combinational circuit so sequential circuit is a combination of the combinational circuit and also a memory element so the purpose of memory element here is in order to store the previous elements means in order to store the past history inputs right so that memory element we are connected in the form of a feedback so in the sequential circuit the memory element is placed in the feedback passed to the combinational circuit so, here the memory elements are devices capable of storing binary information within them. So, the purpose of memory element in the sequential circuit here is to store the binary information. It is used to store the binary information. So, coming to the block diagram of this one. So, this is the block diagram representation of your sequential circuit that comprises of combinational logic and also the memory element. So, in the definition we had seen, a sequential circuit consists of a combinational logic circuit whose output depends not only on the current inputs, but also on the history of inputs. So, where I am storing this past in inputs, we are storing in the memory element. So, the sequential circuit that it comprises of the combinational circuit and also the memory in unit. So, here the inputs we are giving to the combinational circuit from the combinational circuit that we are getting the outputs. So, and uh, one more thing here, the from the memory unit we are giving to the past inputs. So, finally, from this, uh, from the definition and from this block diagram, we can say the outputs that are depending on the primary inputs and also the secondary inputs. So, what are the secondary inputs here? The secondary inputs here are the history of past inputs. So, finally, the outputs are depending upon the present inputs and also the past inputs. Right. So, here the sequential circuit, we are having two types of sequential circuits. The two types of sequential circuits are one is synchronous sequential circuit, the other one is asynchronous sequential circuit. So, synchronous, asynchronous. So, here we are defining a synchronous and asynchronous based on the term called clock. So, the only element that we are defining as synchronous and asynchronous with the parameter called as a clock signal. So, coming to the first one that is synchronous sequential circuit. So, in the sequ uh, synchronous sequential circuit, the change, the change in the state, change in the state in the sense the output will change based on at specific times synchronized by a clock signal, right? So, means the output will change only, means even though if you change the input based on the clock signal only, the output will change. Means it is completely depending upon the clock signal. 
So if you change the input signal, it won't change the output. So if I apply the clock, it means if you change the clock, then the output will change. So it is depending upon the clock. So that is that's why it is called as a synchronous sequential circuit. So coming to the example or where we are using the synchronous sequential circuit. So this synchronous sequential circuit we are widely using in digital systems. So it is widely used in digital systems. So what are the digital systems? You know that is examples, computers and processors. Right. So these are the examples for synchronous sequential circuit. Next one is the asynchronous sequential circuit. So coming to this asynchronous sequential circuit here in this one it does not depend upon the clock. Means even though if you change the clock the output will not change. But if you change the input the output will change. So that is the definition here. State changes occur immediately in response to the input changes without a clock. Right. The change means uh, state in the sense output. So the output will change only then when there is a change in the input depend without depending upon the clock. Whereas in the synchronous the output will change when the clock is applied. In the asynchronous even though if you change the clock or without applying the clock the output will change by changing the input. So that is the main difference between the synchronous and asynchronous. So coming to this examples. So in the asynchronous sequential circuit we are used in where the speed is considered as a main factor. So it is used in the systems where speed is critical and inputs are unpredictable. Right. So wherever the speed is required means uh, speed is will be considered as a main parameter then there will go with the asynchronous sequential circuits. So synchronous asynchronous. So synchronous sequential circuits in the sense it is depending upon the clock. So the change in the output will occur by changing in the clock signal whereas in the asynchronous the output will change by changing the input without uh, depending upon the clock. So these two are the different types of uh, two types of sequential circuits that we are having. So next, next three what is what are the differences that we are having between the combinational and sequential circuits. We are having different features or parameters we can we even will call it as feature are parameters. We are having different types of features are parameters in order to differentiate combinational and sequential circuit. So these are all the features. So coming to the first one that is definition. So coming to the definition what is combinational circuit? In the combinational circuit the output depends only on present input values. So what is sequential circuit? Output depends on present inputs and also past history values. So that is the definition of a combinational and sequential circuit. Next memory coming to the second parameter that is memory. So memory no memory is required because in combinational circuit we are not depending upon the past values we are depending only on the present inputs. So as we are depending only on the present inputs we doesn't require any memory here. Right. So, no memory does not require, does not store any previous input in the case of combinational circuit. Whereas in the sequential circuit, it has memory. Right. So, it has memory. What is the purpose of memory here? To store the previous inputs. Right. Next parameter is feedback path. So, in the block diagram we observed. In the sequential circuit we are having memory that uh, memory is the output feedback that we are giving as mem to the memory from the memory again we are giving as input. So whereas in the combinational circuit we do not have that feedback path. So no feedback from output to the input in the case of combinational circuit whereas feedback loops are existing in the sequential circuits. Next example components means what are the examples under the combinational circuit, what are the examples under the sequential circuit. So coming to the examples adders, multiplexers, encoders and decoders. So all these things we studied in the previous videos, videos. adders, half adder, full adder, multiplexer and then encoder and then decoder. We studied all the operations in detail in the previous videos. Next under the sequential circuit we are having flip flops, counters, registers and finite state missions. So these are flip flops, counters, registers and finite state missions are the examples of sequential circuit. 
next design complexity so coming to the parameter design complexity so the combinational circuit it is relatively easy to design so why it is easily to design because we, de we are not using any memory element we are not using any feedback path so in this uh, and the circuit complexity is very less in the case of combinational circuit so coming to the sequential circuit it is somewhat more complexity when compared to the combinational circuit why because in the sequential circuit we are using a memory element and that memory element we are give, using as a feedback element so that's why more complex due to timing and state behavior in the in the sequential circuit when compared to the combinational circuit next is the output change so in the combinational circuit the output will change immediately with the input changes because the output depending upon the input that's why the output will change immediately if there is a change in the input whereas in the sequential circuit changes at clock edges just now we discussed sequential um, asynchronous and asynchronous so based on the clock there will be change in the output so that is the output change parameter difference and the last one is the applications for each and everything we will need to, we need to study the applications so the applications so coming to the combinational circuit we are having the applications like we can perform arithmetic operations we can perform logical operations and also we can do data routing so these are the applications under the combinational circuit so coming to the sequential circuit we are having the applications like control units memory units and sequence detectors so these are the main applications of combinational and sequential circuits so these are all the features or parameters that differ combinational and sequential circuit next we'll see what are the examples of sequential circuit so here under the sequential circuit we'll be having four examples one is flip-flop second one is latch registers and counters so coming to the flip-flops the first example of your sequential circuit is flip-flop so what is meant by a flip-flop so flip-flop in the sense it is a memory element used to store only one bit of information the main purpose of flip-flop it is a memory unit it is used to store one bit of information so we are having different types of uh, flip-flops like that here we are having four types of flip-flops one is sr flip-flop jk flip-flop d t so here d represents delay d represents delay and t represents toggle so we will be having four types of flip-flops sr flip-flop jk flip-flop delay flip-flop and toggle flip-flop in detail we will see all these types of flip-flops in the next video right so these are the different types of flip-flops and the main purpose of flip-flop is to store one bit of information next latches so here these latches are similar to flip-flops but the operation here is asynchronous there is a definition here latches latches are similar to flip-flops but typically asynchronous these are typically asynchronous in nature so we are having here two types of latches in flip-flops we are having four in latches i am telling only two right so one is sr latch the other one is d latch so flip-flops we are having four types under latches we are having two types sr latch and d latch but the main one that we are going to study under the sequential circuit are only flip-flops latches that are not required next third one is the registers so coming to the registers so what is the main purpose of flip-flop to store only one bit of information suppose if i want to store more than one bit of information suppose i want to store two bit information or suppose i want to use three bit uh, store three bit of information so for uh, to store like that with the single flip flop i can store three bit of information so in order to store three bit of information how many flip flops are required as flip flops are storing only one bit of information so in order to store three bit of information i require three flip flops right so that's why here a group of flip flops it is a group of flip flops used to store multi bit data it is used to store multi bit data so registers means here in simple words we can say registers means group of flip-flops to store multiple number of 
information. So here we will be having two types of registers. One is shift register, the other one is the parallel register. So shift register. So what is meant by shift register? The name itself it is specifying shifting, shifting of data. So um, towards right we can shift or towards left we can shift. So based on that movement of data from right to left or left to right we will be having two types of uh, we will be having four types of shift registers. So the four types of uh, shift registers here are serial in, serial out. So serial in means we are giving the data serially and we are taking the data serially. Serial in, serial out, shift register. Next, serial in, parallel out. Serially we are in giving the data, parallelly we are taking out the data. Next, parallel in, serial out. And the last one is parallel in, parallel out. So, what is meant by serial and what is meant by parallel? So, here we are having serial and parallel. We are telling about two things, serial, parallel. So, what is meant by serial? Serial in the sense, bit by bit we are transmitting the data. If I want to, if I am sending the data, bit by bit means one bit after the other bit. So, that will be called as serial transmission. Right? Suppose, if I want to send this data. 1101 1, 1. right first i will send first bit next i will send second bit next i will send third bit next i will send fourth bit so in order to send four bits i am sending the data serially by four times 1 2 3 4 suppose if i go for the parallel transmission parallel transmission in the sense sending all the data at a time means only within one time i am going to send all the data that is C parallel transmission. So, serial transmission, parallel transmission. So, based on that serial and parallel transmission, we are having four types of shift registers. Serial in, serial out, serial in, parallel out, parallel in, serial out and parallel in, parallel out. So, in all the four, four types of sh shift registers, less time that it is required is with respect to parallel in parallel out shift register less time that is required to transmit the data that is parallel in parallel out shift register why only parallel in parallel out shift register because at a time i am sending the data at a time i am taking the data that's why parallel in parallel out is having a very less time we can, simply we can say only one clock period is required in order to send the data and to receive the data next that is parallel registers so, parallel registers in the sense store multiple bits at a time, that is the thing, right. So, these are the four types of shift registers. Next, the fourth example is counters. So, counter, the name, the term itself it is defining count, count, we are going to count the number of clock pulses or the number of events that are going to occur within the time. Right. So, it will count clock pulses or events. So, under the examples of counters, we are having binary counters, up-down counters, ring counters and Johnson counters. So, these are all the examples. The four examples of sequential circuit are flip-flop, latches, registers and counters. So, in the next video, we study in detail the four types of flip-flops. Thank you.